Namaste. Well, something extraordinary has happened. You know, I always knew it was just a matter of time if I kept up this video channel that something out of this world would happen. And, you know, in the past when these things happened, I didn't have YouTube and all that. And so uh, it was just waiting, you know, for the chance to happen, and it happened. You know, we've been doing this series about death. And I've been meditating a lot on death. And last night, just before I woke up in the morning, this morning, I had a dream. And, you know, I've reported many times having dreams with Mother, the goddess Shakti. And um, she has been just so helpful on my path, you know, in every way. Well, I had another dream with her last night. I was in her house. And uh, it's impossible to describe it was very, very old, very, very ancient, but also very beautiful and clean and nice. And so in the dream, of course, I was in Maya. <laughs> I mean, I was dealing with Maya directly, right? And anyway, she says, she behaves as if like this is an ordinary apartment. You know, that I'm renting, that I were thinking of renting. And uh, and I was dealing with her just as if she was an ordinary woman, you know, like showing me this apartment. <laughs> but the place was out of this world, literally. So I asked her, oh, this is a really nice place. When is it available? And she says, September. And he said, oh, this September, that's only like three months away. And she goes, no, it's September next year. Now, I can't remember, I can't recall ever having a dream before where there was dates involved. Usually dreams are out of time. They're timeless. Is that I mean, when was the last time you had an, an appointment to meet somebody at a certain time in a dream? <laughs> Never, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know about you. But anyway, dreams are generally out of time. Uh, they have their own time, dream time. That's why we call this series Dream Time. And uh, they don't really, you know match to the Jagra times, reality, so-called. <laughs> it's like when you're in the dream, the dream is reality, and you forget all about Jagra. Jagra doesn't exist. Then she said, okay, it's not this September, next September. And that's what, 2024? September, okay. I said, okay. Well, I didn't think of 2024 in the dream, of course. But I turned around to go back to what was in the dream, like my room in her house. And I took the doorknob in my hand, and the whole door came off in my hand. The door, the door frame, everything just collapsed. Plum against a wall. And instead of like a passageway leading back to my room, which is what I expected, there was just like an unfinished tunnel, a dead end going nowhere, just a few feet and then a solid wall. Boom, then I woke up. What does it mean? <laughs> well, 
I spent most of the day today thinking about just that question. I mean, uh, this was, you know, a significant spiritual experience. And um, I came to the conclusion that it's a warning, not a warning. It feels more like an invitation. Come and live with me. Come and live in my space. And your little space that you're in now, that's going to be closed off soon. I mean, it's already closed off. So uh, my friends are trying to reach me because <laughs> I messaged, uh, I PM'd them about this dream. And now they're like, oh, you're, are you okay? <laughs> well, yeah, sort of. Uh, it depends on what your definition of okay is. I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, this is intense, right? When these things happen, my experience is they're always like uh, presaging something. They're always like something that's about to happen, something in the future. And in this dream... I mean, there were explicit dates. That's the first time ever. So I take it that I'm being invited to the subtle worlds. And um, yeah, this is a big deal. Very big deal. This is like what it's all about, right? And specifically by the beings, the goddess, and so on, I'll, I'll tell you more in a minute, um, who are inviting me are the very ones that I want to have a relationship with for, like, eternity. That's not a coincidence. Can't be. Not possible. So I take it that this is a response from the other side, uh, from God's and goddess's side, that, uh, yeah, you know, come on down. Make yourself at home. Yeah. Yeah. But I needed confirmation. I always get confirmation because I don't trust my mind. See, I've watched my mind for 76 years, and it's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> it's a jumping monkey. It's a quicksilver chariot. It's all over the universe, and then some. So, <laughs> I don't trust my mind. I always get confirmation on any kind of realization, vision, what have you. Because um, um, I'm experienced. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I prayed. This is what I was doing most of the day, was praying, trying to get in touch for some kind of confirmation. And, and finally, um, death got back to me. And uh, this is like toward the end of the day, the end of the afternoon. I've been meditating all day. Um. He says, well, you're studying my stuff. Don't you want to hear it, like, direct from me? And I go, oh, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, this is, like, what it's all about, right? Everybody has to go to the house of death. Everybody. But how many people get invited in whatever capacity, and how many people are dragged kicking and screaming? All right? So I don't know. Of, actually, I don't know of anybody. Well, maybe just my teachers. Prabhupada, 
Osho, Yanananda, and Jnana Shakti. My four teachers, my four gurus, they had this kind of equanimity towards death. But the feeling I have is a positive friendship. There's a, a benediction involved. There's a boon. And the boon is that I get relieved from what has been a rather painful, stressful, uncomfortable life. Because, you know, other than the four teachers I mentioned, I haven't really met anybody with this certain kind of intelligence that uh, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna calls Vyavasai Atmika. Vyavasai Atmika means like fixed, determined intelligence. Like um, we ever on a ship or a boat, sailing boat, and it has an autopilot. Right? It's this thing connected to the compass. I guess on a plane, they have them on planes too. You set a heading. I want to go so many degrees like that. And then it manages the rudder for you. And all you have to do is manage the sails. In fact, if you're single handed, it's the only way <laughs> to sail. Uh, because it's the only way to keep ahead into the wind while you change the sails. Anyway, an autopilot, automatic tiller, that the mind is set on a certain direction, and uh, once that's dialed in, it just stays there, and it doesn't budge. That's Vyavasai Atmika. And um, really, that's the only way to attain these high attainments uh, is by steady concentration. So the people who are doing mindfulness 10, 15 minutes a day, <laughs> when you can maintain mindfulness for an entire day unbroken, on a single topic, a single subject, single object, then you can say, okay, I've got right concentration. But to get to that, so many other things have to happen. You know, it's quite a journey. So anyway, yeah, death is like confirming the invitation, and it's a friendly invitation. You know, I mean, I could probably live uh, 90 or 100 years, you know, if I really wanted to push it. Um, I've got the background. I've got enough hatha yoga under my belt, enough uh, sitting and breath control and all that stuff, and tantra. I could probably do it, you know. But the thing is, I would be a wreck, you know, at the end. So I always pray, uh, please make it something that's like easy, you know, peaceful. Uh, not, I don't want to have an antagonistic relationship with death. I want my death to be a graduation, a liberation, a, a going through the door to freedom, uh, like that. So, uh, you know, I want to go dancing. I don't want to go in an ambulance. <laughs> I want to go riding a lion, you know? That's how I want to go. So I see this as uh, mother and death was Shiva, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Um, answering my prayer and inviting me and giving me uh, 
like not, it's not a warning, but it's notice, you know, giving me notice that uh, you are cordially invited for tea. <laughs> You know, we're not sending the Yamadutas. <laughs> Although Mother might send a lion, you know, oh, that would be great. But it's a friendly invitation. And that's so, so, how can I say, so rewarding to me. I appreciate it so much. Uh, you know, it's hard to put it in words, so... Uh, the people, the very people that for whom I have the most regard, you know, are, you know, like opening up their homes and their hearts to me, saying, come, friend, you know, stay with us a spell. And um, that's something I've been waiting for really in my whole life. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.